Tonight we celebrate the evening Mass of the Lord's Supper. As it says in tonight's Eucharistic prayer, on the day before he was to suffer for our salvation and the salvation of all, that is, today. And again it says, celebrating the most sacred night on which the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake. The Mass makes present to us the self-offering of Jesus that he made through his passion, his death, and his resurrection. And tonight especially highlights two principal mysteries, the institution of the Eucharist and the priestly order. The institution of the Eucharist. Jesus himself gave to us his body and his blood for food at the very first Mass. And this was no ordinary meal. The first reading describes the Passover ritual from the Old Testament, where a lamb was sacrificed, its blood was applied to the doorposts, and its flesh was consumed. And then this was transformed by Jesus, the lamb sacrifice, his blood upon the wooden cross, which was then applied to the hearts of all believers. And so we too are invited to eat his body and drink his blood unto eternal life. It is the source and summit of our life of faith. And in order to have this Eucharist, we need the second mystery, the priestly order. Jesus consecrated the apostles there at the Last Supper to be his first priests, to pass on this great gift to us, this blessed sacrament, to be a perpetual memorial through the centuries. Without the priesthood, there can be no Eucharist. Traditionally, there's a, another Mass that's celebrated on the morning of Holy Thursday, which also draws our attention to this gift of the priesthood, the Chrism Mass. In our archdiocese, like many other places, the Chrism Mass ends up being transferred to a day earlier in the week, for us on Monday, so that all of the priests can travel from all the various corners of our diocese to gather with the Archbishop at the cathedral. Just as Jesus gathered his apostles around him so that he could ordain them priests and bishops, so too we gather around the bishop from whom we have received our call and our ordination to the priesthood. And as Jesus demonstrated to the apostles and to us the call of fraternal charity through the washing of their feet, so too do we priests at the Chrism Mass, exhorted by our bishop, renew our priestly vows, our priestly promises to charity toward the people that we've called to serve. The bishop asks us there, Beloved sons, on the anniversary of that day when Christ our Lord conferred the priesthood on his apostles and on us, are you resolved to renew in the presence of your bishop and the God's holy people the promises you once made, to which we priests respond, I do, I am. We resolve to unite ourselves more closely to Jesus, carrying out the sacred duties that have been entrusted to us, in particular the teaching of the faith and the bringing of you, the Eucharist. Not for our, our glory, but for the salvation of souls. And for your part, he reminds you, God's holy people, to pray for your priests. We priests who are certainly not perfect in the person of Jesus, but not our Savior, that we may remain faithful ministers of Christ. The Chrism Mass receives its name from the holy oils that are blessed by the bishop at that Mass. And this is another sign of, our, of all of our parish's communion with the larger church. That the oils that you saw brought up at the beginning of tonight's Mass come from the same source as the oils in all of the other churches across the Archdiocese. Father John and I brought them up on Monday back the 150-some miles back from the cathedral to our parishes. And on Tuesday and Wednesday, I cleaned out all of the oil from last year, from the various glass containers that we have in our churches. 
Last year's oil is no longer to be used, and since it's been blessed, it needs to be buried or burned. Uh, I end up burying the oil because it doesn't burn all that well. Um, burying it in a place that will remain undisturbed in one of our cemeteries. I then fill the containers with this newly blessed oil, and then they are brought back to our churches this evening. The oil of catechumens for baptism, the oil of the infirm to anoint and strengthen those that are seriously ill, the chrism for baptisms and confirmations. And as I was preparing our oils this year, I was reflecting in particular upon the, the chrism oil. These past eight months or so, I've been preparing our confirmation students for receiving of this sacrament in the fall. And so the oil by which they will receive the strengthening of the Holy Spirit, we have brought here tonight. Of course, though by that time, I will be in my new assignment, assisting with confirmation in my new parishes. But in both places, it will be the same chrism, blessed during the same Holy Week, bringing the graces of the same Holy Spirit to them all. On my mind, too, is the reality that this is the last triduum that I get to celebrate with you as your priest. Being able to celebrate the saving mysteries of our Lord's Passion and Resurrection during Holy Week is the high point of the liturgical year and the life of the priest. It's been a joy and privilege to be able to be with you for these celebrations these past six years. But just like the chrism is the same wherever we go, so too is the Mass. It is the same Eucharist, the same priesthood manifested through different priests, the same Jesus, wherever life's journeys take us. The body of Christ that we receive in Holy Communion forms us into the same body of Christ, the Church, wherever Jesus calls us, you and wherever he calls me to wash feet. Just as Jesus' Last Supper was tinged with sorrow, knowing that he would soon be leaving his disciples, so too my joy tonight also has that tinge of sadness, knowing it's my last Holy Thursday with you. But my joy remains, for I know that you will not be alone, as I know Jesus will continue to work in your hearts. If I, therefore, your priest, for a short time, have washed your feet, continue to wash one another's. Following our Lord's new commandment, love one another as I have loved you.